Overthinking. Readiness. Self-confidence. Competition. How are these relatively related? Let's find out. Welcome back to Relatively Related. I'm your host, Trudy. And I'm Tari. I'm Terry. And I'm Troy. And thank you for joining us on our podcast. This week, we'll be talking about execution, which is the third phase of our Getting Started series. So guys, we're at the third phase. This is it. (laughs) Can you imagine? I know, that's really good. Execution. So just before we dive into the actual topic... How have things been for everyone? I'm good. I've been good. Um, Taking yeah. those little steps? I've been taking those little steps. And one thing that I did, which I said last week, was, you know, starting with the whole mock-up oh. thing. Mm. So uh, my logo is getting there. And um, the outline for my... Um, so you got your sister to... Yeah, I definitely <laughs> got my sister to, uh, to do that. You know, the fans <laughs> sent her some, some messages like, help me out. <laughs> But yeah, um, I definitely started um, doing my out, like fleshing out my outline more yeah. for my show. So that's something that I'm very proud of. And, you know, I got that done. So good, yeah. good. that's good. Uh, for me, I've just been beast mode, just <laughs> writing, <laughs> just writing like crazy. <laughs> Every day I woke up, I was just <laughs> writing so much because, you know, I was trying to take the small steps of writing every day and it's just been non-stop writing so <laughs> it's been a good week i like to hear that it's a wonderful week <laughs> for me it it has been productive i'll be honest there's some areas of improvement um but i'm st- actually starting to see the format of my show and how it's gonna go i mm-hmm. um, actually seeing that on paper and stuff like that it's actually really encouraging to be like oh this can actually work so Mm -hmm. it's definitely been a productive week as i mentioned there is some areas that i need to improve on Mm -hmm. yeah but it was definitely a good week all right so it sounds like everyone has you know you're getting started you're doing the work putting the your skin in the game is that what the saying was (laughs) And, and as and as we mentioned in i think in the first podcast we mentioned you're all our family as well yeah. too right so we hope that you've been listening taking the tips and actually been working taking your small steps for you on whatever journey you're partaking in right now so yeah. yeah yeah so that's excellent so let's just dive right in um just to open up in terms of a question for the group what do you guys think about overthinking i think overthinking <laughs> Like, just thinking about it is just... <laughs> Could you say think one more time? <laughs> I mean, I think I can say think, you know. Um, overthinking is one of those things that it can definitely hinder your progress mm-hmm. because you can use it as, like, a crutch to, again, just not do work, mm-hmm. right? You can yeah. sit down and think about all the ways things can go wrong, as you said last week with uh, Michael Phelps and stuff. But you can think about all the ways that things can go wrong and never really do the work and never really you know get get to that execution phase that we that we want to get to right now originally when i'm thinking of the word overthinking (laughs) (laughs) i wouldn't think it's a (laughs) negative Mm -hmm. um but i can now that i'm thinking about it (laughs) (laughs) i can see how it can hinder your progress because if you keep thinking like at one point you need to get to stop thinking mm-hmm. and do action yeah mm. at one point is stop with the thinking take the action i think the right. necessary i think, I think <laughs> you right. well i guess i should start by saying the word think i think this is a really good question <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no but in all seriousness i've seen ti- times where thinking can be both beneficial and mm-hmm. actually a drawback there's been experiences where i know i would not have been able to get through it if i did not take some time to take time to think Mm -hmm. um whereas there has been other times where yeah that thinking phase went on for too long and it actually Mm -hmm. became a problem so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's my thoughts about that yeah so thanks for sharing and that's one of the key things you know as tari was saying we have to actually think about how long we should be thinking Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. 
Um, do people do that though? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to stop saying. <laughs> I know, but my word is thick. What? You need to. <laughs> but yeah, I don't believe people um, plan how long they should be thinking. But it is crucial to do so because if you don't, then you get into the realm of overthinking. Mm. And based on the book that I've been reading by Mel Robbins, Take Control of Your Life, uh, she pretty much pointed out how overthinking is pretty much a trap that's set by fear, right? When mm. we're fearful of actually getting started, we start to overthink. And it gives a false sense of control because we believe that by thinking, you know, you're making progress when in actuality, you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. You're only thinking, right? Good point. Yeah. So it's important for us to actually take action, right? Yeah. How long do you think a person should think <laughs> <laughs> about their projects but and is, plans? Is there, a, is there uh, oh, okay, you mean in relation to your plans, okay. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like certain things you will need to take a longer um, thinking process other times it will just be like just go out and do it right there's not much thinking involved in it um so it it really does depend on what you're doing mm -hmm. i don't think think there's a set amount of time like oh you have to think two weeks before you actually yeah. do something right no it really does depend on what you're doing mm -hmm. See, I mean, oh, oh, no I, I was gonna say i'm like in the opposite boat i think you should just not even think just <laughs> go, <laughs> just go, go straight into it yeah because i'm always you're the, gonna be the guy who advocates for us to be stupid just right? I, yeah <laughs> be stupid guys like gosh i i always whenever i want to do something i tend not to think about it too much but because like the reason why i don't i don't think about it too much is because i typically would think myself out of it and okay. I don't want to think but myself out of it. But do you think if you don't have a like a thinking process, you're setting yourself up for failure? No, you see, th I think it's the opposite. I think because I don't have a thinking process and I'm just <laughs> going ahead and doing it that way, like it for and this is just how I do it. Mm -hmm. I I'm able to get my 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 thought or idea across completely, and then I go back and fix it, mm. and then I go back and like do the thinking retroactively is that the correct yeah. term for that yeah <laughs> so like i think retroactively like i i act first and then i think later yeah. but at the same time before you go on tari i just want to set the <laughs> ground work <laughs> 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 same thing from last week <laughs> we're married so he has to go home with me it's okay. <laughs> no i'm gonna just set the groundwork here because remember we're at phase three which is mm -hmm. execution phase so oh, okay. mm. we're looking at this from okay. overthinking in regards to execution okay right? good point. yeah so yeah. you've you've done you know the thinking you fleshed out the idea during the you know um preparation phase yeah. and all of that now it's time to execute what about overthinking yeah, yeah. it's in that in yeah. that in yeah at that point i think it's kind of counterproductive yeah yeah um, but i think it's the same order mel mel robin she wrote the five Five second yes, rule, Yes, five right? second rule. And five that's one of the things she advocates for. Like, if you're thinking of doing something, just do it. Like, count five, four, three, two, one, and before you get to one, just do it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really effective because it, it causes you to push yourself to do the things that's in your head rather than just lying on the couch. She said, like, even for waking up, she'll be like, okay, should I snooze that alarm? No, just five, four, three, two, one, get up and go. And that's, that's a good attitude to have because it prevents us from getting stuck in that awkward um, thinking myself out of it phase that Troy kind of mentioned. So, And I think also, <laughs> I'm so conscious of the word think, think now. <laughs> yeah. But um, I feel um, that if you've already done all the work, if you've already, you know. Yeah. The preparation. The, yeah, the preparation mm -hmm. and stuff. You need to now trust that your preparation is good and if you're overthinking your preparation you're gonna again you're just gonna self-sabotage yeah. and mm -hmm. you're gonna end up killing her with your, that your with that groundwork i totally agree with Troy. then at that point it's just like there's no more thinking it's all about action so because once you start thinking thinking then you'll see more negativity more hindrance for you doing it so mm -hmm. at that point but do you guys think that at any point, like, do you, 
<laughs> believe that at any point in the execution phase, it is good to do some thinking? No. I think once you're at that stage, it's just about the action. Get the you already done. did all the work previously. It's yeah. all about the action now. Because once you start thinking there's going to be more problems, there's going to be more issues that, that you can see arise, and that would stop you from going on. So w- would it be good to say that when you encounter some sort of um, roadblock or something, that's a good time to... Yeah, like to if you... Okay, if there's a problem, yeah. then you may have to like pause and like re- re- recalibrate. But yeah. if you're just... Before you even try... Okay. Your yeah. your your idea, you're overthinking it, then that's where the problem lies. Yeah. So first try it out, trust yourself and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to get started, right? And yeah. that's what this whole month we've been talking about, getting started. That's the key thing. The action is what actually brings results, yeah. right? Yeah. Not yeah. the thinking. Yeah. You know, overthinking doesn't produce anything whatsoever. And there will be a time when you can be like, okay, this works. And this work, then you can implement a yeah. course of action. But at that point, once you're at the execution t- phase, yeah. it's all about the action. Just but, go for it. But uh, that's really it. Can be so tempting to to think about things, right? Like it's it's easy for us to say here, like absolutely, don't yeah. overthink things. But Especially thinking, for someone like you, yeah, like all <laughs> watching you, like <laughs> but thinking is so natural. It just it's so just part of your. So natural okay, what being, do you right? get from overthinking, though, Tari? It's a, um, it's a sense of comfort. Exactly. And it's a false sense of comfort, yeah. actually, Ooh. right? That's what, yeah. <laughs> you better talk about it. Talk yeah, about I'm it. talking about <laughs> it right Listen now. To your yeah. <laughs> so they were saying, like, pretty much in the book, that thinking gives a false sense of control. So you believe mm-hmm. that you're you're in control of what's happening, but in actuality, it's kind of like you're spinning out of control. You're yeah. just like, you know, whirlwinding, going around and around and around and not actually taking any forward steps. And a quote that came from the book that I thought was pretty good was, it says overthinking makes you less likely to act. Mm. Research shows that fantasizing about goals actually saps more energy and leads to decreased motivation to achieve your goals. So just thinking okay. about it, fantasizing about it, planning it in your head over and over and over, that actually saps energy from you. So the time you spend, you know, thinking, okay, um, how would I make this podcast? You know, is this going to work out? You know, months are passing by. Another year passes by and you never started. So mm-hmm. what's the point of that? You're n- At that point now, you're no longer motivated. And something Tari mentioned last week was, especially using the podcast example, you know, let's say three years ago, Tari, you had the idea to start a podcast. You might have said, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people in the game right now, you know, but I don't know if it's worth doing, but let me think about it. Let me think about it. A year passes, two year passes. Now you're doing it. Imagine how many more people are in the podcast game, right? So it's better to just get started. And as Troy was saying, then as you start, you can see where you have to tweak things as you go along. Yeah. Right, you can't expect it to be perfect, right? So yeah. it's all about again progress, not perfection. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. So don't wait, just just do it, just get started. Okay, um, so so I guess you guys are trying to tell me that um, I should not be thinking <laughs> when it comes overthinking. to <laughs> overthinking. <laughs> overthinking. That's a big key. Yeah, yeah. no, it's just kind of like a hurdle to get over it. The fact of okay, when do I know? Like you actually ask, like how ma- how often do you think about, like, the amount of time you should think, mm-hmm. and you, I never think that. Mm-hmm. Just like okay, in my own time, thinking about the different possibilities, the different um, the yeah, the dis- different po- possibilities of different um possible outcomes for whatever we do, right? Um, but I guess it is good to at some point bring that in. And yeah. kind of, there comes a point where you have to actually execute and you have to actually do the action and 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 take the steps necessary. Yeah. Um, that kind of dovetails right into my point because I was wondering, because my, my thing is readiness, right? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So we're talking about that point of um, overthinking and executing. But in, in the execution stage, how do you know when you're ready? How do you know when you're ready? So guys, w- what would it take for you to try to know you're ready? I think it takes a like a type of a passion, I guess. Like you have to know that this thing needs to be done. And mm-hmm. then if you as long as you know that this thing needs to be done, the second you realize that, you're ready. Even if okay. you haven't done any preparation, uh-huh. even if you haven't, you know, um, done all the research, all the extensive research, the second that you say, yo, okay, I have a passion for this and this needs to go out, you're ready. Because you'll never, once you're talking from a place of passion, like, you'll never really run out or you'll never be ill-prepared for any situation that comes your way now i'm not saying don't prepare of yeah. course prepare yeah. but yes. we spent a whole week yeah, talking we about preparation. Week, <laughs> yeah we spent a whole week doing that but you have to have that passion and then once you once you have that passion once you know what that passion is then man you're set that's what i think okay what about you terry um how do you know when you're ready that's a tough question actually i think um you know when you're ready once you have done the groundwork. Mm-hmm. Like once you, because I do believe like you gotta do some sort of reaches. Like yeah. I don't believe yeah. going into it blindly, but at the same time, you don't want to be at the point where you just keep researching, researching, and you're not actually not taking any action. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's it's a really powerful point. You need you need to know where to draw the line yeah. between you know doing research or um, actually going. And like I was asking, how do you know when you're ready? And thank yeah. you for answering that. I also think like um, like once like take for example with the podcast, right? Once we did our research, we got all the necessary equipment needed then we know that we're ready. But if we did all the research, we have no equipment, <laughs> even though we can't just go out there and do it, yeah. right? So once you have all the necessary, you did the research, you have all the necessary equipment, you know that you're ready. At that point, it makes no point trying to overthink it and like truly mention. Mm-hmm. But okay, what do you say to the people who just, start podcasts like they they literally like i want to start a podcast today i'm just going to take my phone and record into it from there like yeah there's nothing wrong with that that's absolutely nothing they just they just started right yeah Yeah. Yeah. there's nothing that's actually good too right because then you get your feet wet and you can gain the most important thing most valuable thing which is experience right um you gain that from taking that step and then as you get into the field you might learn okay uh, the phone is good, but we want to do like four people at the same time. So right. we might need a mixer or if we want to be able to call, you know, different things, um, additional setups, you can figure out as you as you go. So it is good to kind of just step in and, and start going. Because there's no perfect time. Exactly. Right? Yeah. There's no perfect time and you just need to get started so that you can start making progress. Right. Yeah. Um, as you were asking, like, how does someone know if they're ready? The example that came to my mind was like, let's say someone having a baby, right? Mm. Like you, <laughs> you might say, okay, well, how do you, how do you know when you're ready to have this baby? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, I, you're I, just that's like, a good point. That's, that's been the biggest challenge point. of my right? life. How do I know no, when I'm ready to have a baby? <laughs> my <laughs> biggest one is how do you know when you're pregnant? <laughs> like, those are guys, really <laughs> crucial things. I haven't had a period yet. <laughs> yeah. and I've been thinking about it all night. <laughs> I'm so scared. Oh my I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pregnant. I know it's been a long time. It's been 26 years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, but <laughs> the point I was making is that, so, okay, I guess you guys can't really, <laughs> but um, when you're ready to have a baby, there's just this kind of feeling, like, you mm-hmm. know, like the body would just naturally kind of tell the woman, like, okay, it's time now, you got to do this. There's okay. just like a bit of, yes, apprehension, there's fear, mm-hmm. anxiety. anxiety, discomfort, and you're like, mm-hmm. this just has to happen. Mm -hmm. And you got to start. So I feel it's the same thing as well, even with our projects. Yeah, you might have some fear. You might have some anxiety. You might be like, 
I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know if it's going to be hard. I don't know what, yeah. but you just have to that, do it. That yeah. baby point is a really yeah. strong point. Because mm-hmm. even when it comes to like deciding when to have a baby, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like you're always coming up, well, you know, I want to finish school. I want to get into my career. But whenever you're ready, you just do it. Yeah. yeah. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink and it. like the reason I ask about being prepared or fully knowing you're fully ready is because I want to just challenge you guys today that readiness is a myth. The, the concept of readiness, it's actually a myth. That's true. Because yeah. if you look at the actual, um, I quickly looked up the definition of readiness. Just on Google, you can find it anytime. Um, it says the state of being fully prepared for something. Hmm. Mm. That's what ready, that's mm. what to be ready means. The state of being fully prepared for something. You're never going to be fully You'll never be fully prepared yep. for anything. Yep, that's true. It's like, as Terry mentioned, major life decisions. When do I buy a house? When do I have a kid? When do I... Do X, Y, Z. If you always, if you're always thinking, going back to your thing, mm-hmm. you're always going to find obstacles, but I'm not making this much money as yet, or I'm not, I haven't done this, this, this yet. You'll never be fully prepared like Troy. You're like, um, like, who should I, when, when should I get married? Who should I get married to, right? <laughs> don't, like, overthink it, don't, don't overthink it, man. Don't overthink it. You'll never be ready. Kind of, you'll never be fully you'll ready. never be ready. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to do it, man. <laughs> Find a girl and just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that uh, that so, awkward so pause. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even. Yeah. But do you get the gist of what yeah. I'm saying? Don't no. try. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Get it. <laughs> no, it's it, the, the concept from a lot of um, people who study this is that being fully ready is actually it's sort of a myth because you'll never get to that point where you're completely ready for anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's nothing where you can be like, I'm 100% fully prepared. Even with this, um, as we started relatively related, looking back now, we, there's a number of things we can say it's not yet in place. Mm-hmm. So we're not fully prepared for starting, but we, you got to get started. And that's the main thing I wanted to bring across today, that it is a myth, but you got to start before you're ready. Yeah, yeah. Because, Don't, yeah, in yeah. life, like... Y- Life is going to throw a bunch of curveballs at you, like no matter what. And mm-hmm. you're going to think, okay, once you start saying, I got this, I got this, then life's like, no, you don't. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. perfect yeah. example. This year, everyone was just oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. Man, oh, yeah. 2020. 2020. Uh, the yeah. year of vision. People had the perfect their vision. vacations yeah. planned. Right? I'm yeah. getting right? married. It's a perfect yeah. year. Yeah. All the people boom. who are just like, yeah, 2020, I'm getting married. Da, da, da. I'm yeah, going to wait till 2020 to do it or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And it looks like it's going to be in this nice church. And da, 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 da. No, you're getting a Zoom wedding. Like yeah. That's <laughs> Shut that's down. That's yeah. All of those, you all of those plans. Yeah. You, you can't prepare. And, and the thing is, to add to what you're talking about, no one could have adequately prepared for yeah. something such yeah. as this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the first big pandemic we've had. In my lifetime, well, and the I know last one was nineteen eighteen, right? So yeah, no up to that magnitude cool. where yeah. everything mm-hmm. was shut down. Yeah. I think they were saying like certain attractions that have been going on for hundreds of years. Yeah. Yeah. First time they were shut down. So wow. Yeah, even Walt wow. Disney, the Disney yeah, World is Disney. like shut down and everything. So That's it's crazy. like they couldn't have prepared for that, no. right? Mm-hmm. But you got to be able to get going and do what you need to do, despite like setbacks, despite the temptation to overthink or over prepare. Um, there's a point when you just got to get going. I want to read you guys a quote I had for this one. It's from an article um, by an author called Srivanas Rao. Uh, she's the founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast. So it's, it's a podcast about just creating and and also the author of three books. It's a really good um, quote here that relates to being ready. It says, most people think that there's going to be a perfect time to start. Mm -hmm. A time when their writing is good enough, Hmm. will be loved by everybody, and will lead to riches and fame. But this is an illusion Mm. perpetuated by not starting and by seeing the people who accomplish these things already. I think that to do creative work of any kind, you have to start before you're ready and embrace the mindset of, let's just see what happens. Mm-hmm. Anybody who has managed to get their work out into the world likely started before they were ready. Wow. So it's That's like you're comparing yourself to people who's wow. already done, who's already gotten there. But they started before they were ready. 
So yeah. we all need that's to kind of really adopt that mindset. Yeah. It that's is. A, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it is. really good. Yeah. And for, for me, there was something that I came across related to this too, and it's called analysis paralysis. Mm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's, yeah. Um, well, I, uh, as, well, we all play, we meet and we play board games and stuff. And in the, in, within board games, there's something that people talk about called analysis paralysis. And it's like when you're playing with someone who overthinks things. Yeah. So and so a game that's <laughs> a Prince game does that <laughs> so much. As you guys probably know cuz we have seriously bored like Prince does that a lot. So when we can when we play <laughs> you're going to see that. But anyways, yeah. So yeah, like um a game that should last like an hour and a half ends up lasting like 4 hours mm-hmm. because of analysis paralysis. Yeah. So it's it it paralyzes you from doing anything because you're spending so much time trying to figure out the very perfect play to move when you should just move and enjoy the moment of what you're in, right? So that 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 is, to me, that's really powerful, the term, because it's like you're paralyzed by your analysis. Mm. And that's what happens a lot when it comes to starting projects. We paralyze ourselves because mm. we spend too much time getting ready or being perfectly, um, yeah, being perfectly ready. We overanalyze things. So it's just kind of like a warning for us as we, continue our execution mm-hmm. phase of the podcast let's not paralyze ourselves by over analysis mm-hmm. let's not try too hard to be perfectly ready let's just go in jump in and do what we need to do so yeah that's kind of what i wanted to bring to the table readiness really is a myth mm-hmm. yeah it really is and that um ties in pretty nicely with my um word um self-confidence right like even you don't have to be perfectly ready, but you have to have that self confidence, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So before I start, how important do you guys think self confidence is? Oh, that's it's oh. key. Yeah, it's key because if you don't have self confidence, then even when you're pitching your idea to 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 someone, they're just gonna be like, "This person is talking to me," but they don't even seem confident in their mm-hmm. own mm-hmm. good point mm-hmm. idea. You yeah. know, like if you're doing an elevator pitch, right? And you're like, yeah, so I have this story um, idea and it's um, it's basically like um, this. I mean, it's stupid, but like there's like this character and this makes character no is doing, I mean, it make, the, the story doesn't make any sense, but does, <laughs> like, you know, and you're saying all these <laughs> yeah, yeah, things yeah. and you don't have confidence. Whereas you're like, I have this incredible story and the character does this X, Y, Z. And I, I'm guaranteeing you, sir, you've never seen this in your life. And you're like, you're really building it up. Like, I feel like that approach would work more, would, would work better than not really having any and ev- confidence. And even going back to my thing, it's it on Trudy's, it, it's kind of, if you don't have confidence, you can prevent yourself. You would spend more time overthinking things and more time trying to get ready because you're like, at the heart of it, you just don't have confidence yeah. in, your pro- mm-hmm. in your product. Mm-hmm. So it's like you, you fall back on, oh, I need to do this, I need to thinker with this, but no, you don't have confidence in yourself and in your product. So it, it needs to get to the point where you're like, no, I am confident. However, I just want to flip it for you guys. I think sometimes it goes to the other stage, right? Like I've been watching a lot of um, rap reaction videos, right, lately, you know? And there are some rappers that, like, they're really bad rappers, <laughs> but... <laughs> they have they that have confidence. confidence. They're really confident, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're just, they think they're, they're music... But, I have this greatest song. Like you gotta hear this. This, yeah. this beat. Yeah. Like this is the best song. Like I, I dropped so many. I spit so many bars there. It was so legendary. And yeah. you hear it. So how do you balance? It's definitely that? a balancing act where you have to have that self confidence, but you don't want it to turn into cockiness, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're uh, over. Ob- conf- yeah, okay. where you're oblivious to what's actually happening around you. Like I think someone who does it well. I don't know if you guys are gonna agree with me or disagree with me. Is um. Kanye West. I knew you were going to say Kanye. The West. reason why I say he does it well is like if he wasn't that self confident in himself, he would not be where he is. Because throughout his whole um, career, he has been hit down, but he just believed that he's producing the best. Like yeah. we may not think that, but that's irrelevant. That's what he thinks. And because he's thinking that, that's where he is at this point. Mm-hmm. I-, I think he is. A good example, but I think he is both good and bad. He's yeah. yeah, when it comes, I think when it comes to producing stuff, he's good. Like he's a good example. But when it comes to like 
some of the songs. Like there was a song where he's just like poopity scoop, yeah. <laughs> scoopity poop, and, right. and he thinks that's a good song, right? And to me, that's a horrible song, right? So, but yeah. it God. got people talking about it, right? That's Which true. Is important. It, it served its purpose, yeah. right? It served its whole the whole idea of all press is good press. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Even yeah. like I'm just thinking about just being self confident. Like as you guys know, um, I was in sales or whatnot. Um, there was this guy like. I don't know how he does it. He sells the worst product, mm -hmm. but because he has that self-confidence in himself, he always does well. So it's really important to, even though you know you can sell anything to anyone, once you have that self-confidence within yourself, what you're saying is like the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess we don't we don't have a solution. Like, is there a point where it's it's bad? I, that's what I'm trying to get at. Is For self-confidence? Yeah. For the extreme, right? Where yeah. you're teetering on like cockiness yeah. and mm -hmm. total arrogance. Like you can't yeah. take any correction and stuff. Like that's where it's a problem. But you Like if you're the leader of a country and you just think everything you yeah, do is the greatest like thing about the time. greatest, <laughs> you know, I mean... <laughs> Anyways, yeah. just, I'm just so. saying that's just Ooh. a hypothetical. <laughs> just <laughs> a <laughs> hypothetical. I mean, we don't want anybody like that. Yeah, like, no, there are no leaders anyone, like that. Yeah, no, no, come on. no leaders. <laughs> like None at all that I can think <laughs> about. I'm hoping they all the are perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, you do need to have that at least an ounce of self confidence yeah. in whatever you're doing. Like, because as you know, Terry and Troy were saying, like with presenting your idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, people can read if someone is confident mm -hmm. or not right yeah. mm -hmm. and and just moving past the presentation phase like the execution phase it's also important too because if you're not confident in yourself the first hurdle you encountered while executing that could actually stop you from yeah, continuing really on yeah i want to keep going mm -hmm. and, um like it it's definitely important in sports as well i i, I did some research and it was saying like 20 the self-confidence accounts for about 24% of the variance in performance. So that okay. means it's pretty much whether you can miss or hit a shot. Your it can be whether you hit a game winner or you miss a game winner. Yeah. I mean, if you look at many of the interviews after the fact, right, after they hit a game winner, after they did something great, they'll just be like, I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I knew that. I was going to hit that I once I, I knew yeah. I was once I once I, it was in my hand I knew I was going to hit that. So that self confidence is a really important aspect in whatever you're going to do, right? I think it's one of the things that separates the good from the great. Yeah. That's yeah. what mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I think you can all have a certain level of of ability like you're good, but to get to that level of greatness, you have to have that that Raw, like unbelievable belief in yourself. If you think of the most successful people, they're just like, they had a vision. N a lot of people doubted them, um, took them out of the way, called them stupid, as you mentioned mm -hmm. in last week's podcast, Troy. Mm -hmm. But they still kind of believed in themselves and, and went and did it, right? So, And there's a whole aspect of you, you kind of have to look at yourself, not from your own eyes, but from someone else's eyes. So... Oh. And yeah, it helps with yourself, your your self confidence. So, one thing that you should probably try doing is ask people how they uh. view you, right? How you're seen in other in, in other people's eyes, and that way, like if you are lacking in a certain area, you can then use what they say and then help that let let that um sort of guide you f with your your alterations on yourself, yeah. and then that would also help with your self confidence because you're constantly. You're not you're not you're not just one sided. Yeah. You're looking at yourself from all aspects and then you're able to then like polish, okay, I need to fix this, I need to fix that. And that would help with your self confidence because you're constantly working on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And just some research that it says um what self confidence can do to you. It can actually better overall health because you deal with stress and difficult emotion better. Mm -hmm. Um, more time with family and friends since you tend to set healthy boundaries. Um, better relationship ta thanks to healthy boundaries again. It actually improve your imp your performance to work, better ability to concentrate and greater communication at, at task. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things it says is that it ha with self-confidence, you have a greater level of um, happiness. Mm -hmm. 
Um, no, Troy, you alluded to it, um, and that was one of my next questions, because some people, they lack that self-confidence, right? And mm -hmm. one of the points that we want to um, do with this podcast is just try and improve people generally, right? So mm -hmm. how would you go about to improve someone's self-confidence? Do the opposite of what your mind is convincing you to do right and say and think so if your mind is telling you you aren't good at this mm -hmm. or you're worthless or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be think the opposite thoughts so i can do this i'm capable mm -hmm. i have the ability to do, to do this surround yourself with people and friends who are going to constantly remind you of your worth as an individual yeah. and as a person because Something that we sort of neglect is, like, yes, we do the whole self-care thing, but we also have to be mindful of caring for our friends and the people around us, right? So make sure that those people are constantly reminding you of your worth and make sure that you're reminding others of their worth. Mm -hmm. um, something that I stand by is don't build up, don't focus on building only yourself up. Focus on building up those around you. That's a great and point. that way... Yeah you'll have a fortress around you. Even mm -hmm. when you feel yeah. weak, yeah. they'll Support be able to you. pour. Yeah, they'll be able to pour back into you. So, um, yeah, do that the opposite of what your mind says and surround yourself with people who um, care, who are, like, going to uplift you and care about you. That's a really good point, the, um, the one where surround yourself with people who is going to uplift you and support you because... Yeah. Um, I watch a lot of motivational videos, as you guys probably know, mm -hmm. and... Um, <laughs> In it, he was talking about, um, you know, if you're missing self-confidence, believe, listen to what someone is saying ab to someone, what someone is saying about you until you start actually believing it. So, you know, sometimes we don't see something in ourselves, but someone sees it in us. Mm -hmm. Like someone might be like, you're a good writer and you're doubting yourself. Well, I'm not a good writer. No, believe in what that person is saying in you that you're a good writer, and then eventually you're going to start believing it in yourself. Yeah, and uh, uh, like, whoa, sorry, go ahead, Ty. No, it's fine. Uh, I was going to say, like, I have a friend who, every time I see this guy, I'm just like, you remind me of Kobe so much. Like, your mindset reminds me of Kobe Bryant. Because you know how he was just, like, a very serious guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, he comes from this, his angle on it is just like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm not serious or whatever. Like, I, like but I'm just like, no, bro, yeah. you remind me of Kobe. Like, there are certain things that you, you like certain mannerisms that you have, certain, the, the, the way that you approach life in certain tasks, like, it reminds me of Kobe Bryant. And like, mm -hmm. only now that he's like grown and stuff, now he's starting to see what I'm saying. But like, yeah, like, you have to just, if someone is telling you something about yourself, believe them. Believe them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. You're um, going to say something, Terry. No, I was thinking that one of the things I would tell someone who's lacking is in confidence is kind of drown out the noise and get started anyway. Mm. Because sometimes the lacking in confidence can prevent you from getting started. But when it comes to executing, once you get started... Every little success you have is going to help boost that confidence. So, you know, you might be lacking in confidence, but if you just still put yourself out there, still try, wh the first success, you'll be like, wow, I can actually do this. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and don't, don't, and we talked about this last week, don't set all these big lofty goals, set little goals. So as you mm -hmm. accomplish them, it's going to be like a little bit, Boosting your confidence, a little more boost, a little more boost. And the more things you check off, the more confidence you will go. So I would let I would definitely let them know that confidence is not an all or nothing thing. Mm -hmm. It's like it it comes in very in, in different um, gradients, different varieties, and you know, it can be stronger at times, but doesn't mean you don't have it. Put yourself out there and the more you put yourself out there, the more little successes you accomplish, the more your confidence is going to come. It's not going to just come at the snap or at a finger. Even the people who appear to be most confident, they have times where they're not like they, they doubt themselves, but still they put themselves out there and do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would mention to that person. And yeah. I would say to someone who wants to build self-confidence is 
sometimes you have to get out of your head (laughs) because really that's like where a lot of the doubt resides like in your head like you're the things we say to ourselves sometimes that can diminish our confidence like we're just oh my gosh i'm not smart oh my gosh i'm so stupid oh my god why did i say that like you 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 have all these little conversations in your head and then that can really sap the confidence that you need to actually get out there and believe and and see yourself the way others truly see you Mm -hmm. right because you can have someone who's great right everyone around them is like wow this person is amazing but if inside their head they don't believe that they're great or they don't believe they can do it it doesn't really matter right like they'll just their confidence is just going to be zero yeah. Yeah, and the second thing I would say for someone with self-confidence issues is also Yes, I said get out of your head, but also reframe how you look at things, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, maybe I, you know, shot this goal and it was, you know, a little off. See it as like, okay, well no. Yeah, it was a little off, but I'm this much closer mm-hmm. to the actual goal, right? So, don't mm-hmm. look at things from the negative lens see it from the positive, reframe how you look at the things you do. Um, I would use the example, like when I was like going through rotations and stuff, um, you have to present, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're in front of the attending, the, the attending physician, and they'll be like, okay, tell me about this patient. <laughs> and you're just like, oh my God, like you have all the information. I know everything. I know everything about the person. And because I didn't have confidence, I'd be like, um, mm. so this is so-and-so. And, you know, and they're just like, okay, well, what do they have? Um, you know, but I had to say, you know what? You have what it takes. You can do this. Believe in yourself. So sometimes you have to boost yourself, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, it's something you have to, like, you pull is smart. with. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pull it within yourself. Like, so reframe things. Like, even if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just see uh, it like that. And some small things that I jot down while it, that I personally found work for me. Um, one of them is visualize yourself being successful. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're doing, just visualize you being successful in that. Um, exercise. I know it sounds, you know, I'm going back to that, but it does h- help you boost once you exercise. Like you, the endorphins and stuff like that goes into your brain. You get a little bit of boost. You feel it better with yourself. Um, remember things that you have done that was successful. Mm-hmm. Nah, that's a good mm-hmm. Yeah, so focus on those things where you were successful. Um, set small goals for yourself. Like we mentioned, the Lego. Set mm-hmm. small goals and achieve them. That would help boost your self-confidence. Positive self-talk. Mm-hmm. Rather than saying, I am stupid, be like, no, I am smart. I am capable. I am able to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, focus. Because what we tend to do, we th- we like you mentioned, we tend to focus on the things that we don't do well, mm-hmm. but focus on the things that you do well and don't focus so much on the things that you don't do well. And and the last thing, and I think is really important as well, don't care what other people say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't care. Just do what you need to do. Just don't care. Just, <laughs> just stop caring. Stop caring. <laughs> just be a stoic. <laughs> So that's some of the, the the strategy that I've used to help me gain self-confidence because we all need those joy to our process, right? I mean, sometimes we have that self-doubt that comes in. But remember those, for the listeners, remember some of the tips that we mentioned and you can gain those little self-confidence along the way. And it's interesting that you're talking about self-confidence because growing up, I struggled with self-confidence a mm. lot, right? I used to, you know, like I used to weigh one no two like what 80 something and like that was like a big thing you look really confidence. good now by Thank the way <laughs> <laughs> i weigh like 170 now <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah um i used to like weigh like almost 300 pounds it was oh. i was getting pretty close up to that at like five six and it was it really like messed up with my it messed mm. with my confidence, right? And You're closer to five five, but <laughs> I'm <totally happy. laughs> I'm just Thanks so much. <laughs> so now all the single ladies are gonna be like, Ew, he's five five. Gross. <laughs> um yeah, Kevin hey, Hart. Kevin Hart, yeah, yeah. Kevin Hart, you know. <laughs> but yeah, um yeah, I um I used to, you know I had self confidence issues with that and I used to compare myself to people. Ooh. That was one of the biggest um hurdles yeah for me to jump over right 
And um, so I started, you know, losing weight and, you know, I started to stop comparing myself to other people. And that sort of leads into my um, discussion point that I want to talk to you guys about today. Um, It comes from this book, The 12 Rules of Life by Jordan Mm -hmm. Peterson. And it's one of the rules. And the rule is compare yourself to who you were yesterday, Mm -hmm. not who someone else is today. Wow. So let's just sit. Hmm. In that (laughs) for a second, why is it so important for for you to compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not who someone else is today? I'm going to throw that out there. So whoever wants to answer that, answer that. It's a hard question. That's like, a literally very, like I've, that's a deep question. I that's have a stumped a everyone and <laughs> I'm just <laughs> done. Like, this is it. I think uh, I won the podcast. I think, <laughs> I, think uh, I think it's really important to compare to yourself. That's the main part I take from that, where you were yesterday um, instead of where someone else is today. Because first of all, uh, the first thing is like we don't know the struggles they've gone through to mm, be where they are today. Point. That's a really good point. We only know, the only thing we know exact is our struggles that we've been through to be where we are today. So, mm-hmm. and I think if, you, if you're being honest with yourself and you look at the progress of your life, you can see there's definitely areas of like improvement. And as Terry said, focus on the positive, right? So when you compare yourself to where you were like 10 years ago, for example, you were... 100 pounds more or more Mm -hmm. 110 pounds more Mm -hmm. um to where you are today that's good it's 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 a really good progress rather than focusing on where someone else you might be looking at someone who's five six and like 140 and and feeling bad about yourself like oh my gosh this guy is 140 he's he has a perfect six pack no you've come a long way Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. i think when you do that it prevents you from falling into the trap of like um negativity Mm-hmm. And as we all know, negativity, it, it's, it can be a spiral, right? It can yeah. just affect your ability because we're talking about execution here at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. It can affect your ability to execute because you're, you're, you're stuck comparing yourself with what someone else is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it happens a lot in sports and stuff where people are like they're just trying to do the best for them, right? Rather mm-hmm. than compare themselves. And it's like the fans that come in and come, but you're not quite Michael Jack, uh, Michael, Michael Jordan, Jordan or, yeah, yeah. or in music, you're not Michael Jackson or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, I'm that's trying true. to be the best version yeah. of yeah. me okay. I can yeah. be. And I think that's the best thing we can do. Don't compare our, ourselves to some perfect other person because we don't know their struggles they went through. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go off too much, but just recently I was watching that documentary with Michael Jordan and like he faced a lot of criticism yeah. like when his father died because you know they they criticized him um they were saying maybe his gambling caused his father to die and stuff yeah. uh, to get killed i didn't know that that he went through th- that so being younger i may have been like i want to be michael jordan but i don't know the struggles the criticism that he uniquely has to face so we have to be very careful when we do that because it, it, it can be very dangerous so just compare yourself to you and you you know exactly where you've come from and where you're going. So. Yeah, and uh, oh, go ahead. Jay. No, I was just just thinking about that. It's like if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you're not gonna be happy. No, because you're always gonna fl- find flaws in yourself, and that would just make you less unhappy. Whereas if you're just comparing to yourself each day, you just want to be a better version of yourself. It will lead to a way happier life. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, so if you're constantly comparing yourself to someone, you're not going to be happy at all. No, and the thi- and that it's perfect that you said that because it, when you, the best person to compare yourself to is yourself. Mm-hmm. And like say if, okay, Terry's weight right now is, let's say his is like 150, right? And mm-hmm. he's just like, you know, ripped. Yeah. Right? Just yeah. R- totally ripped so like right. what i see in the mirror every day <laughs> every single day right like what trudy sees wait which mirror is the ripped mirror right and then i now i'm at like say i'm at 200 pounds and i s- i'm looking at tari and i'm just like man like he's 150 and he's ripped i'm 200 pounds every like good thing that happens like so say if yeah. today i'm 200 and tomorrow i'm 198 yeah. or 199 mm-hmm. like you're going to be so upset looking at Tyree, like, oh my gosh, I'm not 150. Yeah. 
but you're 199 today. Yeah. You're you not beat even yourself yesterday. Yeah, and, it all, and it also goes back to what Tari was saying, right? You don't know what this person is doing. You have, Maybe like, he's like... He's an, throwing he's, up all his food. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Maybe in his, in his life, he's so unhappy yeah. with himself, right? And we, we... Okay, when we don't know what happens behind closed doors, it's easy for us to like come up with this whole fairy tale of yeah. like, yeah. this is how you got Idealistic. everything you have. But no, if you sit down and talk to them, yeah, you, I, 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 I sat down and talked to some people, and they're just like, "Yo, like I have X, Y, and Z," and I'm just like, "Yeah, whoa!" Yeah. Looking at you, I he would have never, never guessed. guessed that you were going. He could to be that. that way because he has health problems. Exactly, right? Yeah. right? So like, you don't, you never know. The best person to always like compare yourself to is yourself because mm-hmm. you can always be yesterday's best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that's I just firmly believe that. If you are, if it is weight loss, you can always be one pound lighter within a week and yeah. be happy about that. If you are, if you want to get into like writing or whatever it is, you can always write one page. It's going to be better than the page you wrote yesterday because everything you learned yesterday, you're, you're applying, applying today yeah. and mm-hmm. you're, you're constantly getting better. Right. So I want to sort of ask this question. Has there been a situation where you were jealous of somebody and you didn't really know like what they did in order to get what they um for, what they had for for me it always um just going back to like um high school mm-hmm. um just comparing myself because um you know high school for me was a bit of a struggle at the beginning so I'm all, I always used to compare myself to like you know the so called smart kids or whatnot mm-hmm. and be like. I want those type of guys. I'm envious. They're smarter than me or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So that's something I used to do, right? Just okay. compare myself to like the so-called smart kids. Okay. And what about you, Trudy? So um, I learned this lesson early in life about not mm. kind of comparing myself to anyone else. Mm-hmm. I remember I was in middle school and... Um, well, Troy, you're too young for this. <laughs> but do you guys remember like those um, jerseys, like the basketball jerseys? Yeah. Like they were so popular. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. used Poppy. to wear yeah. them. Like Poppy. whatever. The, everyone yeah. used to Poppy. wear them. I remember that. Like, Anyways, <laughs> um, so you're too young for this. <laughs> I'm a '90s baby. I remember like there were some like friends I had, and they would have like all the different ones, and I'm like, mm. how do these people have so many of these basketball jerseys? And then one day, I remember, like, they were all just kind of talking. And they're like, yeah, you know, so we're just going to go to Foot Locker. And all you have to do, you just take, like, you know, a couple of them to try Mm. on. You go in with your jacket. You put one on and put your sweater on top of it. And then you put your jacket on. And then you just just walk out. When I heard that, I was like, Oh, so this is what you people are doing. You're gonna like stealing and like <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I am not going to be jealous of anyone. Yeah. I don't know how they got what they got. This person could have stole what they have. What is the point of me being jealous of someone who, you know, use illegal means or whatever to get certain things? Yeah. And just to bring it to nowadays times, um, I recently joined, you know, Instagram. And I'm the so gram. proud of myself. <laughs> what's, you know? your at, what's your at? What's your at? <laughs> at Trudy Penny MD. Okay. <laughs> and so I as you were saying, like you gotta compare yourself to the day before. Yeah. You know, so let's say, you oh, know, yeah. on Monday I had twenty followers. I'm like, yay. <laughs> yeah. Then Tuesday I had like maybe twenty five and I'm like, yay. Yeah. You know, so I'm happy with each day's progression yeah. mm-hmm. and then i came to realize that there are some people you'll see who have like five thousand followers yeah. but apparently you can buy followers i didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you can, you can. but the oh. thing is right even <laughs> even if someone got to where they got to like legally like i know you gave the illegal yes. example even mm-hmm. if they got to where they got to legally you still shouldn't feel anyway yeah. anyway about them because my thing is, you don't know how much time and they energy. Had to put into you're, you're, it, yeah. Let's say the people who do have a million and it's not bought, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you don't know how much time they put in, like every day. Are you willing to every day post two, two, two stories or two, um, mm-hmm. two full, uh, two full pictures or whatever? Yeah, like yeah. you know the set like of the ten. Full set, yeah, yeah the yeah, full yeah. set of ten. Like, are you willing to do that? A lot of people are not willing to put that much the time work. into those. The the, work, the, yeah. the, so that's why, that's why, that's how I answer that question. That's mm-hmm. how I don't feel jealous because I'm like, 
even if they did it, they got to where they mm-hmm. got to in a good in a good manner. Mm-hmm. Am I willing to to make mm-hmm. the sacrifice? How many some of this yeah. nights? Yeah, they have? That's some of those people that are like CEOs or entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. They had to sacrifice time with their family. Yeah. Yeah. They have to sacrifice fun, their sleep. Are you willing to do, to that? do that? If not, then it doesn't make sense feeling jealous about yeah. them. Going back to my example, um, you know, with my high school, the reason why, you know, I got rid of that is that once I sat down and like talked to the guy or whatnot, he had absolutely no social life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as, yeah. as soon as um, school finished, he had to go home. Um, he, he do his homework, study about this. He he has to get certain amount of hours of sleep, and not only that too. The his parents put so much added pressure on mm-hmm. him that you know even if he comes home with like a B plus, it wasn't good enough for them. Mm. So just thinking back on that, it's like no, I don't want that. No. I actually do want to have a social life. Yeah. Like and the thing is, it's like people just see what they want to see exactly. in you, right? Yeah. They just see their perception of what you're doing. And I know I all, I, I get so annoyed like when I hear people say like, oh my gosh, I wish I was like you. Oh my God, I wish yeah. I had your life. Or like, oh, I was jealous of, jealous of me? <laughs> <laughs> jealous of me for what? Right. <laughs> for what? Right. As Terry mentioned, like the whole no social life. Like going through med school. Like, Hello. Have no so friends? what's no, social no, life? What's that? No what's okay. that? You mean like those two years okay. or four you just years? Join of, Instagram. I <laughs> just joined Instagram. Yes. Well, I don't know if that's because of No, it, it, is, it, is, it, it is. It is. It is. She's not social. Anyway. That's what it is. Don't try to use that. <laughs> no, but the truth is that, and as Harry was saying too, the whole idea of sacrifice. Are you willing mm-hmm. to sacrifice? Yeah. I sacrifice. You know how many birthdays I've missed? Mm-hmm. How many, True. you know, holidays? I'm just like, man, I'm like watching my family. Um, the phone, like, oh, yeah. man, I wish yeah. I was there. Yeah. I wish I was there for Thanksgiving. Yeah. No, but I'm stuck with some books studying all these hours, right? So you never see what the other people, their sacrifices, the difficulties that they're going through. You just see what you want to see and you make your assumptions. As you said, it's like a fairy tale. You paint a fairy tale of the person's life, And right? when, you, when you think about it, too, it's the silliest thing because... Some people are so upset. They'll Okay, think about it like this. You want to get to a destination, right? Say I want to go to England, right? My friend has a jet and he takes his jet and he's flying to England. And I'm just looking at him like, man, like look at him flying in the sky. But like there are so many other tools. Like there's a, for this example, there's a bridge that goes from Canada to England and yeah. you have a car. Mm-hmm. So, Right. The second that you're just like, oh, man, like he like, look at him. He's he's so good. Da, 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 and you start being jealous of him. You're admitting to yourself that there, that's that is the only way that you can get to your destination. Yeah. That's no. not true. Yeah. No. Like there are so many other ways you can take a boat to that destination. Mm. You can take a car to that destination. You can fly to that destination. There are three different options. Right. It's all about what you can bring to the table and how you personally um, tackle whatever objective or whatever um, 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 dream or whatever challenge that you you wanna you wanna achieve, right? I think in, in rather than compare to people, you just wanna compliment people. When mm-hmm. not like compliment as say something positive about them, but as in compliment, like walk work alongside them, mm-hmm. uh, because what I notice, like with us, we all have different skills, right? For example, with this podcast. Now, if I'm like, I'm competitive towards Troy yeah. and I'm like, oh man, he's doing all, he, he understands the lighting and stuff and it's so annoying. I don't understand the lighting and I compete with Troy, then that, that, would, that could actually hamper both of us from going forward. But mm-hmm. if I'm like, okay, I compliment, how can I work alongside you? How can I use my skills like preparing researching and stuff like that mm-hmm. beforehand mm-hmm. like how can i use that how come trudy and terry how can each of us complement each other so that as a team we go further than if we were competing against each other yeah you know so that's that's how i see it i think it's better to kind of work alongside people um someone who as you mentioned with the flying okay yes that's what they can do but they can probably bring like you know a certain amount of people yeah to to Eng- to, to to the England, United yeah. Kingdom, yeah, <laughs> but I can take like a few other people. You that, have an RV. Yeah, like. they might be, that may may have a fear of heights of flying. I can take them on 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 the road and and stuff like that. So it is good to complement and work alongside rather than yeah, just compete. I, you can learn so much from complimenting someone yeah, too, yeah. right? Like 
say if again that's the end goal for you england uk the uk is the end goal for you right and they're flying there but like you're on the ground or whatever just give them a call be like hey okay i see that you're going to england like tell me about your travels like what about like what should i i don't know ask them for some kind of advice or like Mm -hmm. let them be a mentor to you or something right there's nothing wrong with asking people how did you get to this point and you know like how can i get to that point too right so again with your execution remember that you are going to you're gonna feel inadequate you're gonna feel like oh i can't do this or you're gonna feel like oh maybe you know um um this person is better than me but that's that's not true. No one is yeah. better than no. anyone. No one is better than yeah. anyone. We all yeah. have our strengths and we all have our weaknesses. That's just right? we're so all on our own journey. Like exactly. That's the part that, that, that I don't that's get. A great, I'm, that's a great way to put I'm it. I'm on yeah. my journey. You're, you're on, on your, your journey. journey. Yeah. Yeah. I can be the best version of I'm me. Like, I can't be the best version of Terry. Can no. you be the best version of Terry? Absolutely. You not. can. Do you see how sexy this guy? You can. No. You can be the best version of Troy. I can be the sexiest version of Troy. The sexiest Troy. I can be the sexiest Terry. Terry. Are you gonna be the sexiest Terry? Yeah, I can be. I'm still thinking about how I can get pregnant. Like, I'm still <laughs> <laughs> You're still I'm on still, that I'm one. Still, right? My mind hasn't oh my moved off of that. Like since oh she brought up gosh. that analogy about yeah. feeling your body's ready, <laughs> my body's not ready yet. Yeah. But I'll get there someday. <laughs> and and I'm just thinking that's why we have so much people with so who are so unhappy in mm-hmm. this world because yeah. they're mm-hmm. constantly comparing with someone else. Like even. One of the reasons why I pull back a little from social media because I was doing that. It's like, mm-hmm. whoa, this person is is in Cuba. Oh my God, I didn't go to Cuba. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm constantly trying to compare to them. But who knows? Like they could be in Cuba and they could be having the worst time yeah. of their life. But they just take that snapshot of them smiling and looking yeah. so good. They could right? be having food yeah. poisoning. Yeah. You, you have don't no clue know. So you, <laughs> as you rightly said, That's Judy, like you're on your own journey. Yep. Everyone is on your own journey. That's Focus on yourself. Mm-hmm. That's something I learned about social media. Like, mm-hmm. the, someone said it's just, you know, when you watch the, uh, if you're into sports or anything, or even movies, right? You, you, there's, it's one thing to fully sit down and digest a movie or to watch the 10 minute cliff notes of the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the not highlights. the same. The highlights. Mm-hmm. It's, it, yes, you might see the best parts, but you're not really getting the full context. Mm-hmm. And you, social media is just the highlights of people's lives. You, you're seeing said, the best parts, but you're not getting the full context. Make sure you follow happening. us on, in, on all the social media yeah, platforms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, yeah, social media, it's good. <laughs> what's your at, Tari? <laughs> at Tari Phillip. <laughs> and what's your at, Tari P, I think. At Tari P, P, yeah. yeah Tari. T-R-R-Y-P, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, at Akil Phillip. At Akil Phillip. I am at the real Troy Penny. <laughs> the, real Troy, the one and only real And Troy at Silletry. S-I-L-O-E-T-R-Y. Yeah. Don't forget it. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 you know, in terms of social media, it is good. There yeah. is positives from it, but it's just you have to be careful. Just know there's not always the context mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. What, what's actually happening with the people's lives is, you know, sort of the highlight. And that's why it's so important for you to not compare yourself. Yeah. yeah. Because you're only seeing the end product, but, hey, you did not see the journey. You yeah. did no. not see, see the entire journey. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, right? That, that was that really was good. Really good yeah. No mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm. So what did we talk about today? What was uh So, you know, just listening to everyone and just this discussion as a whole, it's really amazing to see how we can tie these four concepts together, right? Starting with um your own. You said my very first what's one. Your, what, what's your first one, Trudy? Because I know you forgot it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Tell the people, like, yo, listen, listen. I, here I I'm trying so later. hard. I'm like, oh God, what? Yeah. Isn't was it, it overthinking? Yeah. Overthinking. Yeah. overthinking. See, I was underthinking. <laughs> I was underthinking. I had no clue what was going on. Listen, listen. <laughs> you guys are going to see the raw, like, version oh of all God. of this. You're going to hear it. So, like, yeah. So, Trudy uh-huh. was uh, overthinking. That was Yeah. You. So, you know what? You know what's going to make this work? What? We're all just going to say our words. Yeah. Yeah, more time <laughs> and i'll tie it together let's right. try this so overthinking so your challenge is to make it all relatively yep, related. Yeah. Gonna do okay that. that's okay. yours today so yeah. overthinking and my word was readiness mm-hmm. so yours was self-confident and mine was competition yeah so the thing we have to remember or that we gathered from this podcast is that overthinking it's really just a tactic of fear mm. and what we need to do is we need to realize that you know what we're never going to feel fully ready. Mm-hmm. However, 
all we need to do is have the self-confidence that we can execute whatever plan that we have. And we need to remember that, hey, there's no need to compare ourselves with anyone else. We're each on our own journeys and we're going to execute and get it done. And with that, we just want to say thank you so much for listening to the podcast. <laughs> Trudy's doing a little yeah. dance right now. Thanks okay, for dad. making it all relatively related. Yes, that was yes, really yes, good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, make sure that you um, subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. Hit like. Like, just punch the like button yeah. right yeah. now. Smash, Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then um, what else? Also, you do? what you can do on YouTube um, is to keep to be engaged actually post in the comments yeah. even on the, on our instagram post which of these concepts really resonated with you of what we just mentioned which one really stood out to you we want to hear we want to hear from you our family members we want to hear some feedback as yeah well. and also like give us some advice for different um topics that you want to see yeah because yes. like, because we're very open to that and very open. and of course you can find us on all your podcasting platforms but we want to specifically encourage you on itunes to Leave us a, a review a rating to let us know what you think of the, the show. And as we said in our last podcast, you're not our family members. If you give us anything less than Only five, five stars, stars right? yeah. if you give us a four, <laughs> you're disowned. You'll be if you give us a three, you'll be twice removed. You know, like yeah. Yeah, just, it's gonna get worse and worse from that. If so you give us a one, you're an enemy. But yeah. <laughs> so so thank for you for listening and joining us on our podcast today. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. 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 And remember, we're all relatively related. Yay. Bye. Bye. Bye.